Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, give a massive round of applause to MC this evening. Give it up for Jason Neal. So, look at you lovely people. First of all, lovely people here, I just want to say it's nice to be here. Really lovely to be here. I've just come back from a spa holiday. Yeah, which was shit. Yeah, it was just a week working in a little supermarket. <laughs> Over here is relaxing as I've been led to believe, so uh, it's nice to be. I've had a weird day, if I'm honest. I woke up this morning with a dead leg. No idea who it belongs to. <laughs> and I went downstairs this morning and had bubble and squeak for breakfast. Yeah, and now I've got to buy the kids two new hamsters. <laughs> So here we are in, in Wells, lovely Wells, next to see uh, who is from Wells. Give us a cheer, the Wells people. Okay, there's a few of you. And, and, and was it, this was the, the family here, was it? The like the weird holiday family, is that good? It's brilliant. And uh, where are you guys from? Hertfordshire. Hertfordshire, you're from Hertfordshire. Oh, that was late, late. <laughs> no, you don't have to apologise about it. If you're that excited about Hertfordshire, wait until I name some other counties. You're going to go, you're going to go crazy. <laughs> So, uh, so no, it's, uh, it's, nice, it's nice to be here. This is a, what a beautiful venue here. I'm loving this uh, beautiful theatre. It's fantastic, isn't it? Although the uh, size of the coffins that must go through those curtains is uh, <laughs> huge. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> no, and we got people. In, we still got people on the balcony, or have you all moved down this this, this side? There was people in the balcony in the first section. It looks like you've been moved down here. That's good. Uh, no, it's lovely to be doing this because uh, basically my job as a stand-up comedian ceased to exist for about eighteen months due to the pandemic. So it is lovely to be doing comedy again. Uh, I had to uh, get a proper job during the pandemic. Yeah, I had to go back to the only job I've ever been trained to do. I went back to being a locksmith. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, oh, I was a very good locksmith. I uh, studied at Yale. <laughs> and I have to say that opened a lot of doors for me and uh, but it was great because during Covid I was considered a key worker so hey. <laughs> no I did have to get a proper job though proper job what was your name sir the, the young the 29 sorry Miles. Miles Miles what do you do for a living Miles have you got a job I work for an energy supplier you work for an energy supplier is that octopus energy or one of those kind of it used to used to Used to work for Bowl. I, uh, this might interest you because uh, I used to work uh, at the Energy Efficiency Council. Yeah, I was a manager at the Energy Efficiency Council. I lost my job though for telling my staff that my door was always open. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I have. I've had lots of different jobs. I had to do lots of different jobs during lockdown. For a little while, I was the manager of a struggling boat shop. Yeah, I had the genius idea of lowering the ceilings, and of course, immediately sales went through the roof. <laughs> I was also the DJ at Stonehenge, although I no longer mix in those circles. <laughs> and a lot of the lovely ladies in here might appreciate this. My favourite job during lockdown, I don't know why I'm focusing on you, madam, but my favourite job during lockdown was working at the Rampant Rabbit Factory. Yeah. No, I loved that job. We had a fantastic motivational slogan. It was, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> <laughs> So here we are, here we are in lovely Norfolk, North Norfolk. Give us a cheer if you're from Norfolk. Oh, five people <laughs> over here. Because I don't know how this is going to go down, but I'm originally from Suffolk. Hey, John. That's why I was born. Ooh, dodgy. Yeah, we're going to kick off now. Have we got anyone else from Suffolk? Anyone from across the border? No, we don't travel <laughs> far too much. <laughs> No, I, I grew up in Suffolk. I had quite a sad childhood growing up in Suffolk, though, Joe, and although uh, my parents were like a mother and father to me. But, uh, <laughs> but I did have a sad childhood because uh, I didn't, this might shock you, uh, but I didn't lose my virginity till I was 21 years old. 21 years old. Shocking, isn't it? But that's what happens in East Anglia when you are an only child. <laughs> Oh, excellent. I've got someone clapping over there. Thank you. Clapping a little bit louder with your extra fingers and webbed hands. That's good. Uh, that was quite brave. That was, a, that was a dodgy moment there, wasn't it? It was quite brave for a comedian to come to North Norfolk and do an incest joke. <laughs> We've already found out most of you are one family here. Aren't you? Uh, this, this gentleman here with his uh, cousin stroke aunt. Stroke. <laughs> Possibly mum and sister as well. Who knows? But, uh, 
Now, I, lived, I grew up in Suffolk, uh, moved around a lot, moved around, because it's weird, right? A bit weird, but my surname is Cowards, but I actually come from a military family. Don't know if they, anyone, anyone got any military connections? Oh, what's your military connection, madam? Okay, your family were in communications. <laughs> <laughs> military community, no, what was it? They were in the war against Japan during, during yeah. World War Two. Okay, thanks for keeping it nice and light there. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, were they in the Navy, Air Force? Yeah. Navy, in the US Navy. Oh, fantastic. Because uh, I can't, my family, right, it's a bit on, on my mum's side, uh, and my granddad's on my mum, uh, my, yeah, my granddad and my great granddad on my mum's side with the Navy, uh, the Royal Navy. My, uh, my, my granddad was on my mum's side, was really unlucky. He was on a ship that sunk on bonfire night on the 5th of November. My worst night of the year for a ship to sink, because uh, his training kicked in, he did exactly the right thing, he let off all the distress flares. Because <laughs> all the people on the other ships just went, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so he drowned. So, uh... <laughs> but no, and, and on, my, on my dad's side, my dad's side, uh, they were in the army, because I was an army brat. My dad, uh, my dad was in the Royal Engineers. My dad was a Royal Engineer, you know, specialised in clearing minefields. And he always wanted me to follow in his footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> and my granddad was in the army as well. My granddad was the regimental Christmas tree. Yeah. Didn't see any action, but he was highly decorated. <laughs> <laughs> but he met my nan, actually. He met my nan while she was in the military as well. My nan was a nurse in the military. She was a military midwife. Yeah, she was in the C-section. <laughs> No, you can't groan at that, because it's not easy to tell jokes about midwifery, because uh, it's uh, all in the delivery. <laughs> so now, I did have a tough childhood. Uh, yeah, we were poor growing up. We were so poor that we lived in an anorak. Yeah, and I tell you, it was tough growing up in the hood. And I went to the School of Hard Knocks, or as we called it, Jehovah's Witness College. <laughs> Uh, yeah, grew up in Suffolk. I don't, I don't live there now. I live not too far from uh, Jason, actually. And by what these, I live, I live in Loughborough now, in, uh, in the East Midlands. Oh, that, that was an interesting reaction. Some some people got excited about that. Some, some people were, were Beaumont Lees people. Did you do you think Loughborough's posh? Was that posh? You were, you were born in Loughborough, were you, man? Excellent. And how do you feel about Loughborough? You feel it's quite posh, quite nice. No, no. Would you would you say it's a bit of a shit? It's kind of got the university, but it's not... Because I've, I've lived... Who gives cheer here, right? Who, who thinks... Like, obviously not the Wells people, because Wells is lo lovely, but it gives cheer if you think you live in a shit hole. Yeah. Oh! Oh, uh, what? It's <laughs> all in Hertford here, aren't you? Not... I live in London. I live in East London. Oh, what part of East London? No. Oh, 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 yeah. Well done for getting here without your ankle tag going off. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've lived in East London, I've lived in all the beautiful places. No, I've, I've lived in some proper shell places, really. Uh, everyone, I think, I think in, in Britain we take pride, don't we, in how rubbish the places are lived in. Because I, I lived in a place, I lived in a place in Wiltshire called Swindon. Have you all heard of Swindon? Yeah. Swindon's one of those places that's got that reputation, a bit like Milton Keynes for being a bit crap. And they're, they're, all anyone knows is about the roundabouts and stuff, and Swindon being a bit of shit. Like, if you don't know how shit Swindon is, by the way, it's the only place I've ever lived where the Anne Summers has a back-to-school range. <laughs> it's genuinely true. And when I lived there, when I lived there, at the end of my road was the local dogging site. Uh, and I have to say, it's good to see you again, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were going to shake my hand there, that's it. Thought I recognised you, and then I saw the back of your head, to be honest. But, um... <laughs> no, it was, at the end of my road was the local dogging site, or as my neighbours called it, the park and ride. So, uh... <laughs> So yeah, I live in Loughborough now. So cool. I'm celebrating by who? Because uh, I'm in a new relationship. Give us a cheer if you're in a relationship. Woo! Thanks. So give us a cheer if you're single. Oh, someone very happily single over there. That's good. A very happy single. I, I, I'm, I'm in a new relationship. I was single before I met my, uh, my lovely girlfriend. I was single for five years, right? And I wasn't happily single. I was so lonely, so desperate. In the end, I made myself a Lego sex doll. <laughs> and I tell you what, I loved it a bit. <laughs> So <laughs> she had a fantastic arse, so uh, in the end I had to break it off. So, um, <laughs> but now I've got a new girlfriend, I'm a new friend, I met her while she was working at the zoo. 
And yeah, there she was in her uniform. Straight away, I thought, she's a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> and when I met her, she said she wanted a fairy tale romance. So being a romantic, I locked her in a tower <laughs> and made her sleep with seven dwarves. <laughs> It was a hell of a weekend. I know, it? <laughs> and uh, my my, girl, my girlfriend's a, a Geordie. She's from Newcastle. We got any? I don't suppose we got any Geordies in, have we? Got any Geordie? Hey! Oh, we got Geordie. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Wayne. Wayne. Yeah. I like the way you have to think about that, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Are you actually from Newcastle itself, Wayne? Yeah, County Durham, a bit further south. County Durham. Oh yeah, a bit further south. Do you consider yourself a Geordie, though? Not really. Not but I bet everyone calls you a Geordie, don't you? Because like no, something. So yeah, Southerners like me, we count anything kind of vaguely northeast of Geordie, don't we? Like, uh, I love a Geordie, like, because uh, my, my girlfriend likes to say he's a Geordie. We're, we're not just romantically involved, Wayne, we're, we've also gone into business together up in the northeast. We've opened an animal crematorium up in Newcastle, yeah, called Alvida Zayn Pet. And Wayne, you're, you're very friendly people up in the North East, aren't you? Lovely people. But I was worried when I went up to Newcastle because I was living up there for a little bit and uh, I thought, like, I'm, I, I'm a soft southerner. I was born in Ipswich. I'm originally from Southern. I've lived in London. I've lived in Swindon. I've lived so, in the South most of my life. And I thought, when I go to the North East, they're not going to gonna think I'm a horrible southerner. So I need to ingratiate myself with the locals. So I learned a fact, Wayne. I learned a fact about Newcastle. I thought, this is how I'll get in with the locals. I'll learn a fact about Newcastle. So if you ever go up there, right, brilliant place, Newcastle. If you ever go up there and you need to ingratiate yourself with the Geordies, use this fact that I learned, right? It was that the medical condition, gangrene. Right, was first discovered in Newcastle by a Geordie doctor. Yeah, he was looking at a bloke's leg. He went, I don't know what it is, but it's Gag Green. <laughs> sure, it, Wayne. Sure. <laughs> so I love, I love the travel aspect of this job. I do. I love, I love going up to the North East. It's a brilliant place. I, I travel all over. Have we, have we got anyone from overseas, by the way? The, the, the lady there, there was a bit of an accent with you, with your family from uh, in the United States Navy. <laughs> uh, yeah, where, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Latvia, I'm from Europe. You're from Latvia? Oh, fantastic. Like Riga? Uh, actually, yeah. Fucking hell, that was lucky, wasn't it? I was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I've got to see it after Riga. I was out of it. That's good, uh, fantastic. Well, wonderful. I've never I've been to Estonia because I'm next door. It's a beautiful oh, yeah, part of the world. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty much the same. As, so if you, it's basically with the Baltic states, states. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. <laughs> It's, but no, that's, that's brilliant. Because like, have we, have we got anyone else? I've never, I've never gigged in Latvia. I'd love to gig in, in yeah. Europe. Yeah. No, I would not. No, Latvians well known for not having a sense of humour. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, we've got a bit political there. So, what's your name, lovely lady? What's your name, lovely lady? Stephanie, Stephanie, you've gone a bit political there, haven't we? Like, let's, let's see if we can bring it around. Because I'm not really a political comedian, if I'm honest, but uh, I did make a uh, jelly. Well, Vladimir flew in the other day. Uh, and uh, now I'm worried that I may upset a dangerous president. And, uh, <laughs> I can't believe of all the jokes I've done, that was the one that got applause. <laughs> Uh, but no, I, 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 I still would love to, to gig in Riga. I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to gig, because I've gigged all over the place. I've gigged uh, all around the world. It's fantastic. I Because uh, I, I do. I love the travel aspect of it. And Stephanie, perhaps you can answer this question, because when I, I go abroad, they, they say tra broad, uh, uh, travel broadens the mind, don't they? And you learn about cultural differences, right? Because I've learned some things as I've travelled. For instance, in, in Latvia, I'm sure in Riga, you know what a Kindle is, yeah? An Amazon Kindle? You know what that is, yeah, it's an electronic book, everyone knows that, yeah, it's an e-book, an electronic book. I thought that was a universal reference until I went to New Zealand. Because in New Zealand, a Kindle is what you put on a birthday cake. <laughs> Come on, bro, blow your Kindles. <laughs> I do. I love the travel aspect of this job. I've travelled all around the world doing this. I've travelled all over the place. And there's only one place I don't really like. And uh, I'm sorry about this if it's controversial, but I'm not a fan of Germany, I'm afraid. Like Germany. Stephanie, do you like Germany? Is Germany all right? 
You, you don't mind Germany? I've got a problem with Germany, and it's not for any political or historic reasons, or even sporting reasons, football or anything like that. It is because I had a bad experience in Germany as a child uh, on a family holiday when my dad nearly choked to death on a German sausage. <laughs> Oops, some of the ladies have had a similar experience. <laughs> No, my dad nearly choked to death on a German sausage. And of course, after that, uh, we feared the worst. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I am an idiot. I'm an idiot from Suffolk. Uh, I freely admit it. There's a village in Suffolk, missing it's idiot whilst I'm here. And uh, I, uh, it's not hard to confuse me. I got confused at a gig the other day. Someone told me something people might have heard. Someone told me that 40 is the new 30. You've heard people say this, 40 is the new 30. Yeah, but you try explaining that to a speed camera. <laughs> I went into Waterstones today, right? The bookshop, this confused me, right? Walked into Waterstones, and in their, in their travel section, they had a promotion. There's a brand new book that's out. It's called 101 Places to Visit Before You Die. I thought, 101 Places to Visit Before You Die. That's interesting. Picked it up, flicked through it. Didn't suggest a hospital. <laughs> Madness, madness. Number one answer, Lady Well, number one answer was the Taj Mahal. Which, if I'm honest, is not even the best Indian restaurant in Loughborough. <laughs> but no, I do, I'm an idiot, but I am creative. I think this is why I got into stand up comedy. I'm quite creative. I tried to use lockdown creatively. Uh, I wrote a film script during lockdown, Lady Jane. Uh, during lockdown, I wrote a film script. Uh, Sending it off to Hollywood. I'm trying to get it produced at the moment. It's uh, about a constipated detective. I think it's called No Shit Sherlock. Because <laughs> it has been my dream for many years to get into the film industry. And uh, when I was a young man in my 20s, I actually went over to Hollywood. I went to try and get a job out there. And uh, like a lot of young people, I went out there with hopes and dreams. And quickly it all fell away and it went into dark despair, really. Well, I couldn't make any money. I couldn't get the job in Hollywood. And ladies and gentlemen, I'll share this with you. When I found myself spanking Dwayne Johnson... That was when I really knew I'd hit rock bottom. <laughs> well, so I invented a couple of things during lockdown, a few things. I, I want to go on that Dragon's Den and see what you think, right? I've invented a talking measuring jug, which uh, speaks volumes. <laughs> and am I disappointed? Am I disappointed that my voice activated car isn't working properly? Well, it goes without saying. <laughs> But where I really think I'm going to make my money, right? See what you think. I think it's a genius. I invented a medicated shampoo, right? Medicated shampoo not only clears up your dandruff, but also helps alleviate arthritis and athlete's foot. And I'm going to market that as head and shoulders, knees and toes. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a very active brain. I have a very active brain. I don't know if anyone else is like this. Uh, Stephanie, do you, do you sleep all right at night when your head hits a pillow? Are you, you, you able to switch your brain off and just get to sleep nice and easily? You don't even know. You don't even know what you do. <laughs> you sleep perfectly. No, no, I envy you. Like I wish I was like that because like, I don't have that. Like No matter how tired I am, right? no matter how tired I am, like tonight, after the gig, it'll take me a couple of hours to drive home. I'll be knackered when I get home. But as soon as my head hits a pillow, that's when my brain kicks into gear. It's like having a hyperactive toddler in my head, right? I have like lots of questions running through my head. Philosophical questions often going through my head that keep me awake at night. Philosophical questions like, can you get acupuncture to cure pins and needles? <laughs> <laughs> Is Cajun chicken the opposite of free range chicken? <laughs> Do vibrators come with a list of dildos and dildos? <laughs> what was keeping me awake the other night was what to call the underneath of an elephant. I know, mad thing to think about, isn't it? But I was trying to get to sleep and I thought, what would you call the underneath of an elephant? Because some people would call it the chest, wouldn't they? But some people would call it the stomach, some people the torso, the flanks. There's all sorts of answers to that question, isn't there? There's no agreed term for the underneath of an elephant. No, it's a huge grey area. <laughs> So speaking of animals, I love my animals. Uh, give us a cheer if you've got uh, a dog. Give us a cheer if you've got a dog. Yeah, you've got dog people. Give us a cheer if you've got a cat. Always oh, about 50-50 tonight, that's good. Uh, I, I've, got, I've got four cats. I've got four cats and a dog. Uh, and I know you're not supposed to have favourites, but if I'm honest, I love the dog and I hate the cats. 
I do, I do. I've got four cats. I hate them. They're horrible. They're horrible. I'm getting fed up of their constant scratching. And they begin to wish I'd never talked to DJ. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love my dog. I love my dog because I've got a rescue dog. Aww. Yeah, which is great, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, except, of course, when he gets called out in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> it's frankly, a bit of a pain. But, uh, but no, my next door neighbours, they've just got a new dog. They've just found out that she's in heat, which was a surprise to them because they didn't even realise she was a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> So from Jason, Jason was asking about you guys uh, in the start of the show. It seemed like there's a slightly older demographic in the room uh, tonight. So because uh, uh, I'm, I'm a man, I, I was 50 at the end of uh, May. I turned 50, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh. Ooh, thank you. That, that was the right response for <laughs> turning 50. Because there was, there was not because uh, like who, men here, uh, 50 and above, give us a cheer. Yay. Well, there's a few of you, right? Because uh, and it was Nathan, wasn't it, Nathan? Miles. Oh, Miles, sorry, Miles. And uh, and uh, you're 29, was that right? So you've got you've got a little while. You you're a prime specimen at the moment. You've got a, you're a prime specimen of manhood, right? You've got maybe 11, 11 to about fifteen years where it starts to go mid forties is where it goes. Time goes off a cliff. And like and and when I turned when I turned, is, is Dad agreeing there or are you go? No, I'm a fine figure of a man. Look at me, I'm a silver fox. Look at me, that's really, and uh, yeah, and uh, st still still go dogging every weekend. Uh, so, <laughs> but no. I turned 50, right, and the thing I had to have, Miles, right, and this is when you get a bit older, you might have this, I had the male health MOT. Give us a cheer if you're a man and you've had the male health MOT. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what's going on? Have you not? Has no one had it? Have you heard about this, Miles, right? They check all sorts of things, right? You, uh, do you know what they check? Yeah, you're doing the symbol, the international symbol for one of the things. Right, this is so weird, isn't it? Because they check all sorts of things. They check your heart, they check your blood pressure, they check everything. But the one thing everyone knows that they check is the prostate. Check the prostate, right? And you did the symbol there, didn't you? You did the finger up the bottom there for the check of the prostate, right? And I, if I'm honest, I think my doctor got me under false pretenses uh, because he said, uh, we're going to check you over, we're going to check it via digital examination. And I thought, brilliant, it's all online, fantastic. <laughs> but no, it was finger up the bottom to check the prostate, right? Finger up the bottom. Although I said this at a gig the other day, right? And this woman got really irate. She got really upset with me. She said, no, 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 no. That is not how they check it nowadays. Nowadays, they can check it over the phone. <laughs> and I thought, bloody hell, no way, because I've got an old iPhone 6. <laughs> this thing is huge. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to work. And if I'm honest, the camera's not that good and the torch doesn't work anymore. So, uh... <laughs> but no, no more. I had to go traditional method, finger up the bottom. And uh, if I'm honest, uh, the proctologist I went to see was an incredibly lazy man. And in the end, I did have to tell him to pull his finger out. <laughs> <laughs> But he was a lovely man. He told me that he didn't want to be a proctologist. He actually wants to be an orthopaedic surgeon. I just thought, well, I hope he knows his ass from his elbow. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I knew I was turning 50 this year, so I got a bit uh, health conscious. I think a lot of men do this when you turn sort of a, 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 a zero at the end of your age, when you get 40, 50. And uh, I thought, it's about time I started to take my health seriously. So uh, earlier this year, I joined a gym. First time I've ever joined a gym. Uh, it's not gone well. I went one time to the gym. First time I went, I jumped on the cross trainer. Uh, although, to be fair, he wasn't cross before I jumped on him. <laughs> and I've done a bit of research as well. I found out that the word gymnasium in ancient Greek actually meant naked exercise. Yeah. But you try telling that to the receptionist at Fitness First. <laughs> and the police, are they tell <laughs> And I was quite proud, actually, I was quite proud of myself, because this year I was asked if I'd run the London Marathon for charity. Yeah. Uh, I thought about it, but in the end I said no, mainly because I've no experience of organising an event that big. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's for charity, but 40,000 people into that. Think of the admin. It's just crazy, isn't it? <laughs> But I do want to, one day, I do want to run a marathon, right? I want to run the London Marathon, because I think that's the best one, if I'm honest. Because uh, so many people dress up in fancy dress, don't they, right? And I've had this genius idea, sit with me. I want to run the London Marathon in fancy dress, and I'm going to do it dressed as a jacket potato. <laughs> right, I'm going to get a baked potato costume. Baked spud, right? Little legs sticking out the bottom. Baked potato. I'm on 26 and a bit miles. So I cross the finish line, and they wrap me in tin foil. <laughs> It's complete silk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've had a bit of a nightmare recently. I've been a victim of crime, which hasn't been good. Yeah, someone's been stealing all my bank documents. 
And if I'm honest, the police weren't really much help because uh, they just sent someone around who took a statement. <laughs> <laughs> just made the problem worse, really. I did get a bit of advice, though. If you ever, if we've got any criminals in, I don't know if we've got any people that are uh, thinking of committing a crime. Miles, if you're ever going to commit a crime in Eastland, here's a bit of uh, straight from the horse's mouth, right? The police officer told me this. If you're ever going to commit a crime in this country, right, do it dressed as a handbag, right? Because that way you can only be charged with being an accessory. <laughs> <laughs> and my next door neighbour, he told me that he's trying to contact the Chinese mafia. I said, try ads. He said, no, I haven't thought that. <laughs> <laughs> my neighbour on the other side, he told me some sad news. He told me that his wife had been killed by Spanish terrorists. I said, Etta? He said, no, they blew her up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to leave you lovely people in a moment. I'll leave you lovely people in a moment. Uh, firstly, here's the thing, right? Take this away. If you remember nothing else I've said tonight, right? I realise this during the week, right? Here's the thing, right? If you rearrange, if you rearrange the letters of postman, they get really annoyed. <laughs> I was uh, doing a bit of a, I went down to one of those Wikipedia uh, holes the other day, you know, when you start looking up one thing in, on Wikipedia, then you end up like, looking up whole different lots of uh, things. I was, I, was, I was researching blood groups, right? This might come in handy, because I did a pub quiz the other day. This might come up for you, right? I don't know if you know this, the most common blood group in Taiwan is Taipei. <laughs> most common blood group amongst pessimists, be negative. <laughs> amongst optimists, be positive. And of course, the most common blood group amongst dyslexics, typo. <laughs> So I'm going to leave you with a, a little bit of like, uh, as I've got older, right, not only am I worrying about my health at the moment, I've got into kind of alternative therapy. I get, is, is Wells, uh, the people of Wells, is, is Wells like, I get the feeling it's got that kind of slightly hippy-dippy side to it. Has it, has it got like acupuncture places and massage, is that sort of thing? No, not really, no. <laughs> Oh, oh wow, maybe maybe that's, we should start something up then. Because like, as I've got a little bit older, as I've turned 50, I've got into kind of alternative therapies. I've started doing that sort of thing. Right? And I was feeling a bit knackered this week. And I knew I was coming in to entertain you lovely people here at the Maltings in Wales as part, part of your lovely like, carnival festival thing. And I thought, I want to give you people a wonderful show. And I was feeling a little bit low energy today. So I thought, what can I do to give myself a little bit of an energy boost? right? And I looked at all the different things you can do. And I went today and had a coffee enema. <laughs> yeah, now, like, you all know what an enema is. Do you know what an enema is? I don't want to go into too much detail because it's not very pleasant. But basically, a coffee enema is like a regular enema, but you get a cup of coffee, a funnel and some tube. No polite way of saying this, but the tube goes up, up, up where the proctologist's finger goes. <laughs> like, you tip the tube up there, right? You pour the coffee down the funnel. Coffee goes down there. Coffee goes up the tube. Coffee goes up the backside, right? And in your colon, in your lower digestive system, there's loads of blood vessels. And what happens is the stimulant in the coffee, the active ingredient, the caffeine, Right, that gives you that real rush, goes straight into your bloodstream, right, gets pumped around your body, gives you a massive caffeine rush. Right? It's like having 10 espressos, like necking a load of Red Bull. If you're feeling low energy, ladies and gentlemen of Wells here, right? if you're feeling low energy, it is amazing. Right? Really, really does wake you up. <laughs> does, however, get you thrown out of Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, don't make the mistake I made. Let the coffee cool down first. Okay, right. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, you've been an absolute delight, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you've been wonderful. Keep supporting the comedy here and have a wonderful festival, carnival, whatever you like. Uh, the Harley Davises and everything. Have a wonderful time all this whole week when it all kicks off. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's absolutely lovely. Uh, my name's Tony Coward, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to follow me, uh, I am parked just up the road there, so you know, it won't take a lot of effort. Uh, but, um, yeah, no, I'm on the social medias and stuff as well. Uh, look me up there, ladies and gentlemen, and just have uh, a wonderful weekend, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tony Cowles. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank Woo! you. Woo! Tony Cowles, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! And that is how to finish the show.